Hi, engineers. In this last video, the fourth part of this series of videos in descending tracts, we're going to talk about the medullary reticulospinal tract. So again, making it really easy for you guys, we said the rubrospinal tract was controlling the flexor muscles. Guess what the medullary reticulospinal tract does? It also controls the flexor muscles. So if you can remember that, it's going to make it a lot easier for you. So remember, for the medullary reticulospinal, it's also controlling your flexor muscles. So it's crazy to think that the medullary reticulospinal, just one part just below the pons, right, controls your flexor muscles and up here controls your extensor muscles. It's just really cool. So they're antagonists to one another in that, in that aspect, which is pretty cool. All right, so the medullary reticulospinal, where does it originate? All right, so it's in the medulla, a part of the reticular formation. Remember, this big orange thing here is representing the reticular formation, kind of a mixture of gray and white matter that extends from the midbrain all the way to the medulla, right? Now, next question, how do we stimulate this system? Very, very similar. Now, the ponto, we said, had um, some actual cerebral cortex. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. The ponto reticulospinal didn't really have any information coming from the cerebral cortex. The medullary reticulospinal actually does have information coming from the cerebral cortex. So the cerebral cortex has what's called corticoreticular fibers. That's pretty easy to remember. So you're going to have these things called corticoreticular fibers. And these corticoreticular fibers are going to come down here and stimulate special nuclei located within the reticular formation in the medulla. So again, what we have right here, from this side also, you'll have cortico reticular fibers descending downwards and giving stimulation to the medullary reticular formation, special different types of nuclei in this area. They believe it might even be the gigantocellularis <laughs> nucleus. Uh, we talked about that in other videos, the, uh, the pain modulation video, if you guys have watched that. So we can get stimulation from that. What else? Well, remember, there's also ascending tracks. Remember you have those ascending tracks? And as the ascending tracks were taking that sensory information upwards, they can give collaterals to the reticular formation. So if they give off collaterals to the reticular formation, that could also tell, hey, the medullary reticular spinal, you have some information here. Go ahead and send some actual uh, axons, uh, action potentials downward to cause contraction of these flexor muscles. But remember, it's under heavy stimulation by the, specifically what? From the cerebral cortex. Via these green fibers here. What are these green fibers here called? They are called cortico reticular fibers. Now, once this actual medullary reticular spinal tract is stimulated, guess what happens? It gives off its axons, right? Now the ponto, we said, moved into the anterior white column. The medullary, once it gives off its little fibers here, these descending tracts here, these guys specifically move within the, into the lateral white column. So here we're going to move this puppy right over here into the lateral white column, and we're going to move this guy over here into the lateral white column. So here is going to be the fibers coming down from the medullary reticular formation going down into the lateral white column. Now as it does that, what does it do? It's going to give off collaterals that go and stimulate different types of motor neurons that are located within what? Located within the anterior or ventral gray horn of the spinal cord. What is it going to do? It's going to activate alpha motor neurons and gamma motor neurons. Just as a, you guys will never forget it, but alpha motor neurons do what? They go to stimulate extrafusal muscle fibers, which help to shorten and lengthen the muscle. So that's these blue ones. And the green ones are your gamma motor neurons. And the gamma motor neurons are going to be going to the muscle spindles, which are the intrafusal muscle fibers, which help to be able to keep the actual muscle spindles taut to maintain nice, tight contractions, not flimsy, limp contractions. So, medullary reticulospinal, <clears throat> what are the important things here? Stimulation is going to come from the cortex, heavy stimulation from the cortex, but it can also get some information from your ascending tracts, can tell the actual uh, nuclei located within the reticular formation to send these axons down. Now, once these guys send their information down, they go into what column of the spinal cord? 
they go into the lateral white column of the spinal cord and give off collaterals into the anterior ventral gray horn. And what type of muscles are they going to be stimulating? They're going to be stimulating flexor muscles. So now I want you guys to group these two together. Remember, rubrospinal tract and medullary reticulospinal tract, they specifically control what type of uh, muscles? Flexor muscles. Whereas the ponto reticulospinal tract and the vestibulospinal tract, they control more of your extensor muscles. So if you guys can remember that, it's going to make these subcortical tracts so much easier. All right, engineers, so that pretty much covers all of the actual descending tracts, specifically the subcortical tracts. We're going to have a nice little overview in the last video just to kind of discuss these one more time, make sure that we get it down as best as we can so you guys will never forget it. I hope to see you guys there.